Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and this is actually the Ruby review for Volume 7. Sorry this is so late. It's just with, the, with my current computer, there isn't much I can do. I mean, yeah, these Ruby reviews will still be on YouTube. Don't worry. I just won't post covers on YouTube anymore. Uh, yeah. But yeah, anyway, so to start everything off, uh, just a brief review of the whole volume as a whole, starting with, starting with their heroes basically getting captured by the Aesops in episode one, and meeting Ironwood in episode two, and over time, you know, Ironwood ends up. Uh, so time Ironwood ends uh, up giving into paranoia. Well, no, that's not how fucking paranoia works. I mean, considering how fast he turned on the... Um, he's definitely... He's... He's definitely a terribly written character. Like, if they're going for paranoia, they better make it fucking realistic and have it build up over time instead of just all coming out of nowhere and turning the paranoid person in question into a heartless, murderous monster. But yeah, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But then again... Then again, if Adam really did survive and showed a Ben Atlas anyway, by a stroke of luck, it would have been too dangerous for even him to show up. Well, consider the Ironwood state of mind and the fact that there's still racism down there. But that... That's actually way. Right. This takes a pretty bizarre turn. Or it would have taken a bizarre turn had Adam actually survived the fight with Bumblebee. Yeah, I'm referring to Blake and Yang as Bumblebee now because that's all they're known for. Yeah, again, the. Ugh. My god. Bumblebee makes me fucking sick. I mean, it's terribly written, and on top of that, there's other shit, too. I mean, I'm already still upset about Adam's death, but the fact that Vic Mignogna was replaced by Jason LeBret for Crow, look, Jason's trying to copy Vic's voice and his failing horribly. It makes me cringe every time he opens his fucking mouth. Uh, Rooster Teeth and Funimation fucked up. But I'm but I'm getting off topic here. This is more about the Ruby review. So yeah. So yeah. Unlike last volume which had an uncredit scene, this one doesn't and, but then again, it's also for the same reason why there were no character shorts this time. Rather, um, oof. Apparently they still want to work in the series. And not, not have to worry about uh, their animators working overtime for things like that, which... That's pretty noble. I'll give him that. But at the same time, it just makes me a bit more anxious, especially since this one feels incomplete. I I wanted more immediately after it was over. God. Well, um... Well, there's not much. Well, there's not much I can really say otherwise. 
However, I am planning on reviewing Volume 8. Yes. Yes, so anyway, with the whole paranoia thing, let's go back to that for a bit. Yeah, apparently... Apparently... James is so... James Ironwood has said so far up his own ass that he ends up shooting Oscar. Uh, he basically betrays Ironwood and sure, sure near the beginning he says he doesn't want to end up like Leo but ironically enough he got his wish. He didn't become Leo. He became something much worse. Which... Ugh. Oh my god. Then again... Then again, there isn't much else I can say in regards to that, though. However, I... However, I do hope that if Ironwood were to die, then to make the whole headmaster dying at the end of Academy Battles try to take a twist, maybe if Ironwood actually succeeds in killing people by raising Atlas up into the air, like up into the damn atmosphere, then then he'd kill himself. I mean, no character ha has killed themselves yet, although Ren almost did at the end of Volume 4. The episode was No Safe Haven. But yet, no characters have ever killed themselves yet. This may be a touchy topic, but bear with me. I mean, it would make sense for for if Ironwood does kill a, a people in his own in his own home city, then he might kill himself out of guilt. I mean. I mean, it would make a bit more sense for that to happen. But then again, your Ozpin died by someone else's hand, and Leo died by someone else's hand. So if someone were to kill Ironwood, that would cause Atlas to be like all over the damn place. They'd be leaderless. They'd be, they'd be in pure chaos, and Salem would win. But then again, she did win in destroying Beacon Academy in Volume Three. So yeah. Ugh. But there isn't much else I wanted to say. So I might just leave this off here. Yeah, over about Ironwood's paranoia situation. Speaking of someone who's still struggling to get over paranoia, but is slowly on the road to recovery right now. Yeah, the writers should be ashamed of themselves. For the way Ironwood's paranoia was portrayed, because it basically paints all paranoid people as heartless, murderous monsters. Yeah. yeah, and clearly, I am deeply offended by this. And yeah, at the end of the day, the writers should be ashamed of themselves for this. It's 
just terrible representation as a whole. Anyway, with that being said, that'll do it for the video. So please be sure to give it a like, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications. If you want to help my channel out, I don't care anymore. So I won't be posting any covers on this channel anymore. Rather, I'm saving this for Vlair. The, the, the ones in the future will be exclusive to Vlair. <sighs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please be sure to give it a like, comment down below. You know what you think, subscribe and click the bell for notifications. If you have any questions for the upcoming Q&A video, then leave them in the comments as always. I will see you guys in the next video.